Today I'll be importing a laser effect made in one project into a separate project using the sub -X sheet feature of OpenTunes. Hello ladies and gents and welcome to the final part of my series adding a laser blast effect to an animation. In the previous episodes I created the laser blast and then the animation of the characters in two different projects. And here they are. That's the blast and here's the two characters. And today I'll be importing the blast into the animation project. OK, so let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is to add the laser blast. But first it's important to mention that the animation scene with the blast in it is in a different project to this. And this is important because of the way we're going to reference it. Let me show you. So to import the scene from a different project, you simply go to the file menu and choose load as sub -X sheet. You browse to the scene for the other project. And then choose the scene and hit load. Then you get this question where it asks if you want to import or load the scene. With the difference being if you import the scene it copies all the drawings and palettes into the current project so you can work on it separately. You can change the drawings, add to them, remove them or what have you. And it only shows in the current project. In the original location you've still got the original drawings. However if you choose the load option it will reference the scene from the original location so any changes will change the original drawings. Now being as I know I'm going to change some of the drawings, I'll choose Import. So here it is, you can see the blast on screen. And you can see it's added a new layer with the drawing shown over here at the right hand side. And if I just click and drag those to the left. If I scroll through them, you can see the effect. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is to rename the column. So this will be the column for the laser effect for the blue character. And the first thing we want to do is to edit the blast to remove the gun, as we don't need to see that. To extend the length of the ray to make sure it reaches from one side of the screen to the other. And I want to add a guide to show the trajectory of the bullet to make it easier to line it up where we want it to go. So before we do that, notice that the animation lasts 48 frames. And that's the length of the animation in the original scene. So to edit the sub -X sheet, just make sure you're anywhere inside the purple frames. Then hit the button here to go inside the scene. Here we go. So this should basically look exactly as it did in the original scene. You can see the 48 frames being the gun extending across here for two full seconds. Now we don't want to see the gun so we just untick this button here to take it off the screen and then the button on the left to take it out of the output. Now we don't need the gun but I will leave one frame on here so I'll highlight and delete all but the first frame just with click and drag and then press the delete key. So let's take a look at the effect. So we can see the laser moves off to the right of the screen, so we'll zoom out so we can see the full length of it. So that won't reach from one side of the screen to the other, so we need to extend how far it goes. So to do that we'll use the Animate tool. We'll make sure we're on position, and we'll lock the north and south values so that the bullet can only move left and right, or east and west, as it calls it. So we'll make sure we're inside the ray column where the key currently is, and we'll click and drag to the far right. And because the bullet moves further, it also moves quicker, so we'll extend how long it takes to get there by highlighting it and then dragging that further. We'll try 18 frames and see how quickly that looks. It's quite slow, but I think it's still not quite moving far enough. Okay, let's try that. So the final change to the effect I want to add is I want to add a guide layer. So all this is going to be is a straight line, so we'll use a vector layer. Put that there. So we'll just use the line tool. Hold shift key to keep the line horizontal. I'm going to draw the rough length. I'll extend this out to the full 18 frames and on frame 18 you can see exactly where the laser bullet is so let's extend that slightly further 
There we go. So you can see the bullet travelling there. I've put the line slightly lower than where the laser is. Good. Let's just save that. So one last thing to change is we don't want this guy to be shown in the final output, so we'll untick the first button so it won't appear. So let's step out to the main timeline using this button here to close the X sheet. OK. Now immediately you'll notice that from frames 90 and onwards they're shown in red because there are no frames in the sub X sheet. So if we click and highlight over those and press the delete key and now just disappear. So the effect just lasts 18 frames. OK, let's just zoom in again. What we need to do is to find the position of the first laser blast. So I'll extend the play range by selecting on the bottom row here because I know the background will last the whole length of the animation and then when I right click into the time area I can choose set auto markers and that sets the markers to last the full length of the animation. So if I just hit play and watch for when the first bullet arrives. There. Okay, let's just find that. There. 13, 14. So it's at 3 seconds and 14 frames. So all I'm going to do is to copy and paste those frames by using Ctrl X to remove them from here. 3 seconds and 14 into here and paste. So all we need to do is set a key on this first frame, which we'll do by pressing this button here. And that'll set all of the default values for the effect. That's the position, the rotation, the scale, etc. And then we just need to scale and position the effect in the right place. So using the animate tool, let's get the scale set first. So you click and drag towards the center of this marker until it's the right size. And then position, we'll put it approximately here. Let's check on the previous frame. You notice this pink line across the centre, which is really helpful for getting this lined up. So because there's two bullet shots, we select the key, and then using Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste on the last frame, it means that the scale and position of that effect won't change during that period. So let's look for the next bullet shot. There. So let's just come back again and find the exact frame where it happens, so he points his gun and then shoots there on 23. So that's 5 seconds and 23 frames. So we'll just copy these frames again. We can select them using that bar at the top, Control C and Control V. Now the effect will continue from the previous location until we set a new key. You can either press the key button and make the changes, or can make the changes directly with the animate tool. So the position is roughly up here. The rotation points down here somewhere. And this is where you get to see the benefit of having the guide. So now we need to add two shots for the red character. So all we need to do is to add a new layer by clicking the insert of the context menu. We'll copy these 18 frames by selecting the bar at the top again. Control C to copy. I don't know the exact position, so I'll just select one round here and do Control V to paste. And again, I'll rename the layer so we recognize which it's for later. Good, so now we need to find the position where the red character shoots. So he rolls to duck under the shot there, and then when he stands up, he aims and takes a shot. So it's quite close, so let's just move this over to the frame 16. Right, so again we'll add a key to set all the values to zero, and then we need to resize and just reposition it. So the first thing we'll do is to change the direction of the shot. And the way we do that, while we're on the Animate tool, is to go to the Scale option. And you've got a global scale here, which is currently showing 100%. And you've got two separate scales, horizontal and vertical. Now if you just click and drag, you affect only the global scale. But if you hold the Control key, you can independently change the horizontal and the vertical scale. 
And you may have noticed then that when you go past the center point, it reverses direction. So what I'll do is I'll reset the values back to 100%. And traverse its direction is at the horizontal scale to minus 100%. As simple as that. So let's scale it down again. So let's adjust the rotation. There we go. So now it shoots above his head. And again, we'll just copy the key from the first frame to the final one. So the red character shoots twice here, once, and the bullet goes above his head. And as the blue character jumps, he shoots again, and that'll go underneath him. So we need to add this animation twice. And you can see, even though it'll overlap, there's no more effect left on screen, so I can just delete the last couple of frames. So let's move the key back to the left. In fact, before I delete them, let's select them all, copy them, and then paste them ready to use. Okay, so now I can delete 17 and 18. And then drag the rest of the frames into that position. So it'll fire another shot immediately afterwards. So let's take a look at that here. One shot, the character ducks, he jumps, and then there's a second shot, and he misses there too. And as he goes to aim up, the blue shoots down and gets him. Good. So that's the four shots, two for each character, going in two different directions. So there's two more things to do to finish off the animation. The first one is I'd like to change the color of the laser blast for each character, so they're clearly recognizable. And I'll make one blue and one red. And then I'll add the sound effects. So to change the colour of the laser blast, I simply go to my room with the FX panel in. And I've created a separate room for this, just to have the panels that help me. So if I go to the first frame for the blue character, and when he makes his shot, and you'll see that's here. Then in the FX schematic, I find the blue blast layer, I right click, I'll choose Add Effects, and inside Image Adjust, I'll choose RGBA Cut. Now there's quite a few different effects for changing the colour and style of an animation, so do take a look around and have a try of them all, but for changing a simple colour, this one works fine. So we'll select it, we'll plug it in between the layer and the X sheet by clicking and dragging from the blue triangle into the X sheet, we'll click and drag over the line that goes direct between the two, and press the delete key. So to see the effect of what we're changing, if we turn on the preview button, and then any changes will be seen immediately in that window. So let's double click on there. And what I want to do is to hide all of the green colour, and replace that with all blue colours. And it's that simple. In that column where the blue blast is, any green colours are now shown as blue. So we'll just do the same for the red character. So we'll right click on the red blast, add an effect, Image Adjust, RGBA Cut, we'll plug it in, remove the direct connection, we'll go down to a frame with the red blast in it so we can see the change, double click, remove all of the green, and use just red. There we go. And when you turn the preview off, it shows the original colours. Okay, so let's just save that. So all we need to do now is to add the sound effects. And that couldn't be easier. All we need to do is to right click, is to insert a new column or layer, open up a browser with the original sound effect in, and then click and drag the audio file from disk onto that layer. And again, it tells if you want to import or load the audio file. If you choose import, it takes a copy into your local directory where the project is, and if you choose load, it loads it from the location of where the file is now. Now to make my project self-contained, I prefer choosing import wherever possible, unless the file is extremely large. So let's hit import. And that's it, you see the audio file appear on screen. And provided you've got this button pressed, as you click and drag, you get to hear the sound. So again, I'll just rename the column. And then we'll just find the position of where the sounds are needed, and then we'll use copy or cut in this case and then paste 
And because the sound will overlap into the next laser blast, you can choose to either delete this last frame by selecting over it and clicking delete, or we can create a new layer, which is what I'll do, use an insert, and then paste it into there. And then there's another one up here. Finally, one there. So let me just take a listen. Okay, that works really well. So what you probably do now is add a few more effects of when the laser beam hits the walls or the floor. You'd add some more sound effects from the characters as the jumping and landing. And then any other special effects to finish off the animation. But I'm quite happy with how that turned out. It shows how you can use a scene built in one project in a separate project, which is really useful if you've got a complicated animation or effect that you don't want to redraw. So that's it for today. If you've got a request for how to do something in OpenTunes, leave me a question below. And if it's something I can help with, that could be a future animation on this channel. If you enjoyed the video, take a second to like and share to help the channel out. And why not take a look around my other tutorials and animations? And if you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you subscribe to be reminded of future tutorials and animations. And I'll be back next Friday with that video on Shift and Trace and Trace and Shift. And that's a guarantee. Thank you.